Hey there YouTube, Doc, Doc's Motorcycle Service. Rawr, 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 rawr. Welcome back to the shop. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna pick up where we did on the first video and left off. And to try to save time, let's just go ahead and delve into this. Ready? Let's go. So we got these nice and cleaned up back here. This wiring harness for the lights goes all the way back up into here. So they suggest that you make uh, your quick connects from this to your tail light assembly under here. In other words, shorten this harness, lengthen that one, so the plugs are like tucked down in here. So if you have to take the rear fender off, you can just kind of fish them out right here with a little extra wire, which will be fine and will be hidden by the cover. So after I make sure we got good connection here, I'm probably going to cut all this back up into here to some point so you can just pop the cover off right here and have some quick disconnects for your fender but yeah we're making progress okay so tech tip preventative tip if you're going to do stuff make sure you know what you're doing i've said before this is my way of doing stuff you do you you do what you're comfortable with and everybody does work at different levels so now we've got the headlight or the taillight assembly over here on the bike we got it turned on the brake side so we can see where we're going we're not worried about turn signals because there's no turn signals in here we've taken some jumper wires with alligator clips and we've put brown to brown green to green and green and yellow to the um solid yellow on here but you have to be careful because if you zoom in here you can still see we got some wire showing right here on this one and we don't want the ends of these clips you notice this one's hanging off it's not touching this one here is down here it's hanging it's not touching and then the black one is run way over here away from everything you don't want to short again okay you don't want to keep blowing fuses none of these connections here are in contact with the motorcycle so let's go over here now and turn the on switch oh looky there all right so now we think we're getting we're getting where we're supposed to be yeah i said in the other video we was going to use an ohms meter but i said you know what i'm not going to worry about it i'm just going to jump right into it so we've got a tail light a running light we've got our tag light which is on all the time so that's good news so now we're going to come over here and let me see if i can do this with the camera I'm trying to hold the camera on the tail light assembly and hit the brake so i'm hitting the brake now got brighter all right so now we're good so now we know brown goes to brown solid green goes to solid green and yellow goes to green and yellow all right so as i'm turning the bike off remember i always turn the bike off before you start screwing around and blow something up so now what we got to do is and i've done some search on the internet and uh, the internet searches the manufacturer that made this bob bar kit his suggestion was to run this wiring harness from the tail light assembly long up under here and shorten the actual harness from the bike and then use connectors that'll hide under the side panel here and the thought behind that is is pretty smart i'm i'm i'm, I'm probably say it again i'm really impressed with these guys because i made contact with them after i identified that it was their kit and i'm gonna tell you something these these lance over there uh man <laughs> that boy's on his game I, I tell you i've i've texted him i've emailed him i've called him on the weekends at night during the day what have you the dude's always been johnny on the spot getting back to me helping me get all this straightened out but the point is it was a long wiring harness from your light up under your side panel here and a shortened wiring harness from the motorcycle you can then go in here and fish that cable out with your finger and disconnect the three disconnects if you need to take the fender off like for example to change the tire Ta da imagine that somebody thinking about stuff ahead of time okay so now we know what we got to do we need to rewire this and lengthen this and that's going to be dependent on where we're going to put this at 
in theory i would like to reshape the bracket for the tail light assembly to where it would fit over here i uh, picked up a generic tag bracket because the other tag bracket has a really funky piece on it here and um, i'm actually considering cutting this off right here redrilling the holes bending it to a 90 and maybe putting it right here where these two nuts go into the swing arm i guess it is keep in mind i don't know honda so don't give me don't give me grief about about me calling these parts by the wrong name but um, i also picked up a generic tag bracket that we may be able to make work a lot easier all right stick around youtube kind of jumping around here a little bit we're making some progress and sometimes when i get in a groove doing stuff i just forget to take the pictures or video but uh we've got our our fabricated uh light bracket here we basically took the tail light lens uh, assembly bracket and we cut it to go into the fender mount here uh, got back from the auto parts store we got some wire uh, we delved into the tail light assembly to see how the wiring worked on it and here's why uh, we did that as i was chasing the wiring harness back up in here i found where it was actually hidden in this rubber boot and basically i just unsnapped it so we're going to strip this protective um, and it's kind of a heat shrink but it's not heat shrink and we're going to cut the wires and i'm going to sh one last thing before i forget so you'll notice that this white wire runs over here and it's or the green wire comes in and it splits it goes to the tail light assembly which runs the running light for the tail light and then it splits over and it goes to the tag light that is on the tail light assembly we are going to nip that we are not going to connect that uh, tag light because we have picked up a uh, led from the auto parts store that we're going to try to encompass for the tag light because the uh, tag is going to be on the other side of the rear wheel and that would look dumb to have that bright light shining on the side back there so there you go all right back at it went ahead and got the tail light assembly on and rewired it from the inside out using some heat shrink but not actually activating it uh, we may do this area right here simply because uh, we use a smaller heat shrink going into the larger heat shrink to seal it up and keep the water out of it plan is to run it down the swing arm we're going to put another ziplock right here and then we've got this excess here coming from if it'll quit moving coming from the tail light assembly up to the plug-in where it's going to go on this side we have fashioned a um, small led to a uh, tag universal tag mount that we are going to slide over these two bolts right here on the shaft drive and now what we need to do is create a wiring harness for the ground and the power for this now this tag light needs to be on when the bike goes into the on position my state requires that you have a tag light um, a light illuminating your tag at night so the obvious thing here is to run a ground um, to it and then run a constant power to it and my thinking is that we're going to tie into this with a yellow and a black and we've established that the white is the ground and we're going to do the same thing we're going to run it down the drive shaft here probably up to right here with a zip tie in a couple of places and we're going to run it under the battery mount 
and we're going to bring it over here and we're going to run it into the ground uh, for this harness and the constant power uh, for this harness with butt end connectors on this end and then we're going to use butt end connectors on this end to put it all together here and we will probably run another um, section of heat shrink over all this to keep the moisture out so that's what I'm working on now got the table set up over here I'm not going to show you all this uh, soldering and connecting that I'm going to do but trust me that I'm going to get it done and we'll be right back all right we get the heat shrink on got about two inches or so down here hanging out to work with we went ahead and sealed this around the uh, thick um, wiring harness that came with this light so now we're in good shape so tech tip we're going to take it over to the battery we're going to test it one more time to make sure it works and then we're going to keep moving on with getting it bolted on to the swing arm or the uh, shaft drive bolts all right then or as my boy said all right then so we're in business here um, decided to go ahead and use some butt-end connectors here on these wires uh, as opposed to soldering because they're going to be in here flexing a lot as the uh, motorcycle goes down the road and uh, yes I know they're wired outside but that just made it easier for me to get to them uh, what I'm going to do now is unplug the plug, bring this around to the back, run it up through here, plug it back here, and then pull this cover back down over all this. I uh, went ahead and made an executive decision. Uh, we determined that uh, this one of these was the left turn signal wiring harness and then one of these was the right turn signal wiring harness for the rear turn signals. Instead of having all that nasty bunch of wire laid up under the seat up there I went ahead and just pulled that off I'll clean it up put it in a zip block and give it to the owner so um, let's go ahead and and see if this works uh, so we got our tail light uh, assembly here and we got our our tag uh, bracket over here so we're gonna go up to the front of the bike and watch for the high beam on the wall yep it lit up all right coming down here yep we got power here and we got power here now this is going to be kind of hard for me to do uh reaching the brake pedal or either the brake hand lever so let me see if i can let me see if i can set this up on something here all right so <laughs> youtube what i'm gonna try to do is hold this with my left hand Linda, Linda, Linda's napping. We had a big ride today and uh, she's done with it. So I wanted to get this finished up. So what I'm going to try to do here is keep the light on the assembly while I take this yard stick and put it up here and push the brake pedal and see what happens. Let's go. Yep, there you go. You can see it. Um... God, where are we at? All right, well, I mentioned it before, a uh, battery tender. I'm a big believer in them. Let's go ahead and save this battery here and turn this off. Uh, I'm a big believer in the battery tenders. So every bike that comes in here, I try to twist the owner's arm to get him to let me put a battery tender connection on it and we went ahead and got one of those uh god i, I don't want to harp on this tuner man i really don't want to harp on this tuner but it's so hard to get to to um to adjust um let's see to adjust it you pop this door off here and i found the instructions and each one of these three screws here change a setting on the bike uh, and God Almighty, I'm, I'm just uh, I'm torn up about this because you see what we got to go through to um, 
to get this access this thing every time I'm I'm almost considering taking it off here and running it somewhere through here maybe or somewhere to the point that we don't have to take the seat off to make adjustments to this thing and I I, I, I called the manufacturer the manufacturer doesn't make them anymore uh, they said but uh, a guy that worked for them that made this particular model um, is now making them and gave me a telephone number but it's a Saturday afternoon so nobody's answering so I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and, and and bring this back over and if you noticed uh, I went ahead and put some heat shrink on each end of this just to help secure it because you know how these things rattle and move around and whatnot so I just wanted to point that out real quick but I think what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to unplug this run it back through here plug it in pull this back down set it up I'm going to leave this alone for the moment and well there you go okay she's back together looks impressive I think got the bracket right here got the light right there uh, we've got our tail light assembly on over here we got our side covers back on uh, the bike looks good uh, I repainted the rear fender I mean it's still got some imperfections in it but nothing like that big uh, piece of missing paint that was on it before um, we've got our wiring harnesses run down here I went ahead and heat shrinked that piece there to this one to keep moisture from getting in there side panels on um, I mean I mean my gosh you too I mean she's looking pretty clean looking pretty good kind of kind of looking like a bobber like a bobber ought to look like got the um, uh, brand new um, battery tender charger trickle charger in the box there to go home with the owner and uh, side panel on over here uh, we got our uh, wiring harness here for the for the tag there matter of fact a friend of mine locally take a look at this tire and see what he thinks and we'll be right back okay so that's where we're at uh, I will tell you that I made an executive decision I did not I repeat did not attach the tuner uh, if you were paying attention through this video you notice that i was extremely anxious about this tuner uh youtube i'm just going to go over some stuff right here toward the end of this and hopefully you'll stick around and pay attention to it but uh, as i said in the video when you're buying a used motorcycle if you don't know what you're if you don't know what you're buying if all you know is that it's got a motor it's got two wheels it goes zoom zoom take somebody with you who does uh, because it's going to save you in the long run um, this guy uh, obviously got into this bike um, I found out and I do want to say this I want to give a hats off to uh, to uh, blue collar bobbers uh, Lance over there helped me a lot with this and when I say a lot I mean a lot uh, it, it took a little research for us to determine uh, that this thing had a blue collar bobber um, bob kit on it and from that I was able to make contact with them through their technical support a guy named Lance uh, sent me an email back actually I think he called me and um, he was like hey man what's going on what are you doing I laid out what I had where I was at what I needed to do and I'm, I'm gonna tell you man he was Johnny on the spot with the information I have never never seen a company uh, in any type of uh, market uh, be so quick to respond be so quick to be helpful uh, and not only that <laughs> know what the hell they were talking about okay I mean right off the bat uh, I found the website uh, it said call or text we prefer text I text up 
boom he was right back on a sunday on a saturday night while out of town this dude replied to me okay i mean that says a lot right there and we were able to work through and what he was able to do was he was able to give me the information that i needed to use their tail light assemblies wiring harness and then match it up to the uh the oem the oem wiring harness on the bike so everything worked correctly the first time um what was some of the other questions oh yeah we talked about the fender we talked about the bracket we talked about why the fender was rubbing he offered just from memory pointing me in the right direction of the front fender bracket how it worked where there was adjustments at and ultimately uh we um we just kind of bent that uh, that bracket forward a little bit to give some more clearance between the underside front part of that fender and the inside of it against the tire and we alleviated the problem of going through the grooves uh, another guy over uh, so when I contacted Cobra about this FI 2000 tuner again excellent response um, if I remember correctly they said that they no longer made that tuner but they put me in touch with the guy who worked for them that created that tuner that no longer works for them but is still making them they gave me his number i reached out to this guy uh, again on the weekend and at night and he was johnny on the spot to help me determine help me locate the serial number of it and 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 and, and more so than anything else determine that this tuner was for this motorcycle again if you paid attention you probably heard it in my voice how anxious i was you too i'm gonna tell you something i'm just a common guy okay uh, I'm not rich, I'm not poor, but I don't like tearing up stuff, okay? And when it comes to electronics, I have torn up more stuff than I could ever possibly afford, but I found a way around it and it worked. I did not want to take this bike that this guy had owned only a week, okay? I mean, he rode it home, wiring harness got tore out of the rear end of it, he put it on the trailer and brought it to me. I did not want to cause him further um, problems by blowing something up on this bike so ultimately what I did because I just came back from the test ride on it and the test ride on it without it uh, it, it felt pretty good to me um, I got the instructions on the table over there the tuner has three adjustments on it and in a nutshell what it says is look for sluggishness or um, um, so what I'm looking for here um, uh, yeah sluggishness uh, uneven RPMs with steady throttle uh, so like if you're going down the road and you're holding steady throttle on it and it's it's kind of zooming in and out of uh, those RPMs that could be a problem that needs to be addressed um, uh, torque and and strength on pull off on takeoff if it's stuttering um, if it's a bit sluggish there then there's an adjustment for that and then high speed torque on the end when you're like out there at 60 70 80 miles an hour boom this third adjustment is for that i personally i, I drove it to the tire shop and we'll talk about that here in a minute i rode it to the tire shop and we'll talk about that um i felt it was pretty good on the way there you know it was about a 15 or 20 minute ride uh, some straightaways some curbs um, same thing on the way back so uh, I just got off the phone uh, with my buddy and I said look man I'm not putting that tuner on I was like I think the bike's doing fine it, 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 it performs well for me so those three areas that that tuner adjust I didn't see a need for them so and I said here you want your bike back come get it tuner still on it ground is not hooked up so it's it's not working I'm going to give him the instructions and say, look, when you're sitting at home, in your shop, in your shed, under your carport, in your garage, in your living room, whatever, and you're bored one day, pull the seat off of it, start playing with it. And he said, that's fine. That's great. So um, rear tire, you know, the tire was kind of bothering me a little bit too. So I took it to my tire guy. Um, you know, I didn't come out of the vagina knowing everything. Okay, I know some of y'all did. Okay, I mean, some of you are just watching this video just so you can feel better about yourself and your knowledge level and how smart you are. I'm not like that. So I have a couple people that I go to for different things. 
and because I go to them for different things, I throw money their way. Okay, so when I pick up the phone and I call these guys, they're like, hey, doc, what's up? What you working on? What you need help with? And I can ask them to the pointed questions and they give me clear, concise answers because these are guys who do this for a living and they do it every day and they're certified. They help me out. So I give them some business. So I went to a tire guy and I said and I showed him the tire and and I was like, what do you think? And he was like, <sighs> he's like, I'm going to give you two schools of thought. I said, OK, he says one, ride it. Don't ride it. Stupid. Don't get it over 100 miles an hour. Every day, wear and tear on good roads, probably going to eventually work those out. He's like, there's no steel belt showing through them. He's like, I wouldn't worry about them. But then there's the other one. You know, there's the good angel and there's the bad angel. He's like, the bad angel says there's a liability there. You know, you get involved in an accident. They come out. You hurt somebody. Hurt yourself. Insurance is funny. They come out and, and look at that rear tire and go, wow, that rear tire is shit. Uh, if that rear tire had been in good shape, you would have been able to stop before you hit that car. You know, you would have been able to stop before you ran into that baby carriage that rolled out in front of you. So they could find fault with you on that. And, you know, he's like, he said the same thing that the other guy did. You know, what is your life worth? Okay. I mean, stop right here and ask yourself, what's your life worth? You know, if I said... Uh, I'll give you a million dollars uh, tomorrow morning at seven, but the next morning at seven you have to die. Is your is is, is your life worth more than a million dollars? All right. So uh, a rear tire for this thing installed about five hundred dollars. Is your life worth five hundred dollars? I don't know. Only you can answer that question. But those are things that you've got to run through your mind and, and think about. You know, it might not be that you can afford that chunk of change this week, but maybe you can afford it next week. I'm just saying, man, my life's worth a lot more than $500 to me. So I would put a rear tire on it and call it good. You do you. But anyway, so that wraps it up. So shout out to, to Blue Collar. And I cannot right here at the moment remember the name of the... Uh, company that um, uh, I called that makes this uh, F2 th FI2000 now, but I will, I'll put it right here and shout out to them guys as well because I'm telling you, man, good, there's, there's still good companies out there, and when you find those good companies, you need to spend your money with them. So we took care of the fender, we got it reshaped, uh, we uh, got wiring harnesses for the uh, tail light and the uh, brake light, we created a uh, bracket. Uh, for the tag and we ran a uh, a tag light over there so we're legal everything's working on her um, I'm pretty happy with the way uh, the bike turned out and how it looks there's probably some pictures showing up here now uh, of, uh, of pictures I took this morning before the ride and took outside the shop and um, yeah I mean I'm pretty happy it was a nice little diversion um, so again just a little follow-up if you're new to Doc's motorcycle service I'm Doc uh, Doc's Motorcycle Service got started several years ago, man. It's been a little while now, and it was a way for me to share knowledge uh, with you and for you to use your ability to comprehend and apply information given to you to save yourself some money. And uh, we've come a long way. We're in our new shop. Uh, we've got Hot Donna. She's sitting over here uh, on the floor. We took her off the lift to work on this one. Um, we've done a lot of things to this shop. Uh, there's a series on getting the shop built that might uh, cause you to rethink uh, plans for the future if you want you a shop. And um, if you didn't see the update video, if it comes out after this one, uh, if you've already seen it, great, I appreciate it. If not, it's coming out after this one. And we finished the bar, and uh, I'll show you a little bit of that. And uh, we finished this wall over here. You can see a little bit of it in the area behind me. We put some bar tin on it. But we'll go all over that if we not already put that video up. But as always, you know, if you're liking to save money and uh, you enjoy riding motorcycles and you have something to share, you know, by all means, follow the channel. And um, as always, rate, comment, share. Ride safe. Handle your business. Save some money. And cut!